to another episode of Between Two Books. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about the short story, um, and I'm also going to specifically relate it to science fiction short stories, which is our next unit in Upper Two. So a short story, the basic format is anywhere between 1,000 and 20,000 words. The idea is you can sit there and read it in one sitting. It has a limited set of characters, usually a single setting, as well as a very simple plot, because you don't have a lot of words to work with. Science fiction short stories usually deal with things like space travel, cloning, time travel, or aliens, and everything has some sort of scientific explanation. So this differs from fantasy because there's no magic involved. So stop and think for a second if you can tell the difference between certain books and movies that are science fiction versus fantasy. The setting of science fiction short stories usually occur on other planets, but they can absolutely occur on planet Earth. Um, sometimes they're in spaceships, and oftentimes they're in futuristic cities. And finally, with characters, you see a variety of robots, aliens, astronauts, or scientists. Here are some examples of extremely short stories. They don't really fall between the 1,000 and 20,000 word short story format, but here's the first one, For Sale, Baby Shoes, Never Worn, by Ernest Hemingway, and Corpse Parts Missing, Dr. Buys Yacht, by the great Margaret Atwood. So you can pause this for a second and just think about this. We're going to look at seven points of analysis with uh, short stories. First we have characters, then we have plot, conflict, setting, the mode of narration, the theme, and the ending. You don't have to write these down yet, but do pay attention to these as we go through the rest of this presentation. So first let's talk about the characters. Because it's a short story, you're going to have very few characters, especially as you guys start to write your own. Character development is often going to happen indirectly, so we talked about this in our passage analysis unit, but you're going to look at things like speech, the thoughts of the characters, the effect that characters have on each other, characters' actions, as well as the way that characters look. So instead of directly telling the audience all the time, we can indirectly tell the audience a lot about our characters through these items. Oftentimes you'll see a protagonist and an antagonist. So I'm going to use The Hunger Games as an example with Katniss Everdeen as well as President Snow. The protagonist is the main person in the conflict, and they can either be good or bad. It, oftentimes we do associate them with being good, but they don't always have to be good. They just have to be the main person in the conflict. The antagonist is the person or the force who opposes the protagonist. So in The Hunger Games, you've got Katniss, who is the quite good protagonist, as well as President Snow, who is the not-so-good antagonist. Next we move into plot for analysis. So the plot structure of most short stories follows the following items. First you've got the exposition or the introduction, and this is where you're going to introduce the characters and the setting. Then you have the inciting incident. This is the beginning of the conflict. Then you've got the rising action, where the conflict escalates. Then you re this, reach this point up here where you get that climax, and this is the action at its maximum point. Then finally you've got that falling action where the conflict is resolved, as well as that resolution. And now, let's talk about conflict. There are a bunch of different kinds of conflict that you can choose to include in your short stories. The first one I'll talk to you about is man versus self. This is an internal conflict because the man, or the human, let's just add that there, human, um, is against him or herself internally. We have some external conflicts such as man versus man, or human versus human, uh, human versus society, human versus technology, and human versus nature as some examples, and again, those are external conflicts. So they don't happen internally, but rather outside of the person. Then we have the setting. We're going to look at time, place, and circumstances. So in the Hunger Games, think about it like this. What year is it? What time of the year is it? And what time of the day is it? Again, thinking about the Hunger Games, um, think about the place now. So think about the country, think about the city, and think about the type of location. And finally, in setting, consider the circumstances. So what's happening to the main characters? What kinds of situations are they encountering? And what is happening overall? So all of these things, time, place, and circumstances, can affect the setting. Next we have to go into narration. And narration is super, super important because it affects how you read a short story, or prose in general. There are a few different kinds of narration. You've got first person, second person, third person, and one of my favorites, the all-knowing omniscient narrator. 
what you have to do is look at the pronoun. So I'm going to tell you a bit more about that now. In the first person narration, the narrator is involved in all of the events, and so you'll see a lot of I used throughout the prose, and that's the first person pronoun. Second person narration is where the narrator addresses the other characters with you, and that's the second person pronoun. Third person narration this is where the narrator tells the story of other characters and may or may not be involved. So often you get the he, she, or they that are used throughout as the pronouns. And omniscient narrators, they're a little different. They're all-knowing, so they're inside the thoughts, the feelings, the actions, and the motivations of most, if not all, of the characters. Then you've also got limited omniscient, and this is where the narrator has pretty extensive knowledge, but they're not necessarily all-knowing. What you always have to ask when you read anything, is the narrator reliable or unreliable? So a non-science fiction example of this is Gone Girl. We're never quite sure who to trust in this particular book. Now we go into the analysis with themes. So a theme is the central meaning or the dominant idea in any piece of prose or writing. So take a look at this. Theme is the message and we spell it theme right there, that you can take away from the story. So some common themes are perseverance, survival, good versus evil, friendship, and so on. What you have to ask in when you determine a theme, what is the main character feeling, and what lesson or lessons does the main character learn? So you can look at thoughts and conversations that happen throughout, as well as actions or events. And finally, we get to the analysis of the ending. So with the ending, generally speaking, you're trying to settle the problem. Traditionally speaking, we have happy endings and unhappy endings, but in your short stories, you might want to consider other endings, such as the surprise ending, where the audience didn't quite expect that to happen, or the indeterminate ending, where we're not quite sure what's going to come next. And so with that, that is the end of this particular lecture presentation. Start thinking about your own short story that you're going to develop over the course of the next several weeks. Thanks, everyone.